Meta Platforms just reported their Q3 print after the market close and shares are moving down roughly 2% in the after hours. We'll get through all of the numbers that you need to know in this print. Another spectacular quarter from this company showing growth of nearly 19% on the top line. We'll get into all the headline numbers that this company reports. We'll also then take a look at the CFO commentary for the upcoming Q4, really where that lies in with what Wall Street has anticipated for the upcoming quarter. And then when we get over to the technicals, You'll see this one for just over the last couple of months has been an absolute rally mode and that rally is taking a little bit of a breather in the after hours will highlight some levels where probably it would make sense to step in and continue to be a buyer in shares of the advertising giant hey guys hope you're doing well out there if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet as we're in the thick of earnings season we covered meta platforms as other advertising giant otherwise known as Google yesterday. If you want to check out that video, it's on the channel. But today we're taking a look at this advertising behemoth, nearly $1.5 trillion market cap of a company formerly known as Facebook. Year to date it has been in rally mode up nearly 67% over the past one year. You've nearly doubled your money in shares of Meta if you've held these over the last one year, over the last five years, 10 years, you stretch it out. It's been a good, good time to be a Meta shareholder. Apart from that 2022 year, where it was probably the best time, in fact, to be a buyer in shares of Meta. Now, keep in mind, you do get a forward yield with this one, close to 0.34%. That's $2 per share on a yearly basis, not a huge dividend, at least at the current time. Similar to Google, I would say, what you are looking for with this one is for them to continue to grow those free cash flows, to continue to churn out that dividend on a very consistent basis, also continue to increase it year over year. You'll probably get that increase, I would say, in Q4, maybe in Q1, as they report that next year. Now, revenues in the upcoming, part of me, in the most recent quarter came in at $40.5 billion, good for 18.9% growth year over year, beating estimates on Wall Street by a cool $280 million. In terms of the profitability, that also came in better than anticipated at $6.03. If I take a look at what Wall Street had anticipated, close to $5.30 on the midpoint. In fact, the high-end Wall Street analyst had this estimate closer to $5.76. So Meta coming in well, well ahead of that, north of $6 per share on an earning side. Now we'll get into all the important financial and operation highlights from the most recent quarter, but what's more important is the upcoming Q4. That is the holiday time period. That is really when everyone that really wants to advertise throws their money at Facebook, throws their money at Instagram, and just advertises like crazy. And so for the upcoming fourth quarter, Meta is expecting the revenues to be in the range of 45 to $48 billion. Now, where does that lie in with what Wall Street anticipated? Well, it's basically smack dab in the middle as Wall Street had a midpoint of $46.25 billion. The high end was closer to $48 billion. So Meta coming in basically in line with that range. They're also guiding for a high end of 48. Their low end slightly coming in underneath Wall Street's midpoint. So I think if you take a look at Meta's midpoint, closer to 46 and a half billion, maybe even at $47 billion, you're right there with what Wall Street had anticipated. So you're not coming in with a huge, huge beat for the upcoming quarter, at least on the guidance, but likely what Meta will come in and report is probably a number, probably higher than their midpoint that they anticipate. So that's something to look out for. Now, the other thing we got on their guidance is they continue to expect those total full year expenses to be in the range of 96 to $98 billion. Previous guide was for 96 to $99 billion. So just tightening up the top end of that range by a cool billion dollars. But I think what is sending shares lower, just around 2% in the after hours, is the fact that they now expect full year CapEx to be in the range of 38 to as high as $40 billion. Previous guide was for 37 to as high as $40 billion. So probably just increasing that bottom end of the CapEx range up a billion dollars enough to tell investors, yeah, this company is still, still, believe it or not, willing to spend more on CapEx. If they haven't done so enough already, they're willing to continue to push the pedal on the CapEx investment. And again, this company's probably biggest fears is that it's not investing enough in those AI infrastructure workloads. And the investors over at Meta are probably fearing that this company is spending way too much or at least too much on building out that CapEx on the AI side. So certainly there's a bit of push and pull in terms of what Meta thinks is a good amount of CapEx and certainly what investors would like to see. And that's probably one of the reasons why you're seeing shares decline in the after hours just by a modest 3%. Now you also got some key metrics from Meta that look fantastic. Family daily active people continue to increase year over year up 5%, now up to 3 
1.29 billion people using one of Meta's products on a daily basis. This company, I feel like, won't stop until they get every single person on the planet using one of their apps. You also got the ad impressions continuing to increase 7% year over year. That's good to see. You also like to see the average price per ad continue to also move higher up 11%. It'd be interesting to see for the upcoming Q4 just how these metrics move because you again have that holiday time period. Certainly should be good for not just Meta and Google, but also your third tier advertiser like an Amazon as well. So keep an eye on their advertising unit as well. We got that revenue guide for the upcoming Q4. And then as we get over to the cash flows, the balance sheet, you'll see this company continues to print just loads and loads of money to the bottom line, continues to in fact become more efficient as well. And so we'll take a look at that from their financials. Now, a story we got earlier today is that Cornerstone enters into a strategic partnership with Meta to extend their AI capabilities. So Cornerstone seems like it's a firm that improves how enterprises and organizations look to onboard their new hires, look to reskill, upskill their current employees as well. So probably a firm that an enterprise would look to hire in order to sort of do that onboarding or upscaling process for their employees. So interesting to see Meta now sort of partnering in that enterprise space. Certainly their bread and butter remains on the advertising side. But as this company continues to spend and build out those reality and AI products, certainly companies that are more enterprise focused might begin to turn to Meta instead of just looking at a company like Microsoft in terms of those AI capabilities. So that's interesting to see. Certainly, maybe down the line, you can see Meta push more into those enterprise customers as well from an AI standpoint. Now, what we really want to look at is the segment results because the bread and butter for this business remains advertising. You see it right here. The family of apps generate nearly $40.3 billion in the quarter in terms of revenue. You still have that minuscule amount of revenue coming from Reality Labs at just $270 million for the quarter. Year over year, you are seeing an increase as last year you were closer to 210. But again, this is just peanuts, peanuts compared to the family of app revenue, which continues to chug along very, very nicely. Last year at the same time, you were at 34 billion. Now you're north of 40 billion on that advertising side. So continue to be very, very strong. What's even better is the fact that the operating income continues to move in the right direction. $17.5 billion in terms of family of apps. Operating income is what you had to show last year. This year, it's ballooned up to $21.7 billion. So you're also seeing operating margins expand overall from 40%, same time last year, now at 43%. The only thing holding those operating margins back is the losses or the operating losses on the Reality Labs segment. We've said this before here on the channel, the Reality Labs needs a reality check because this company is on the pace to burn close to 16 to $17 billion over the last 12 months on the Reality Lab segment. Guys, consider that. There's a lot of things you can do with $17 billion. Heck, you can give me just a measly $1 billion of that. And yeah, that would pretty much set me up for life. But $17 billion is what this company is burning on the Reality Lab segment. And look, some of that is going into the meta glasses that they partnered up with Ray-Ban for. Some of it certainly going into those AI capabilities. And similar to how we saw with Google yesterday, as Google has that other bet segment, certainly investors are giving these companies the pass on some of their side projects as long as their main project, which is advertising both for Meta and Google, continue to move in the right direction. As long as the family of apps continues to just print money, yeah, to a certain extent, investors are willing to gobble up the loss on the Reality Lab segment because the hope is down the line, maybe two years, maybe five years down the line, is that the Reality Lab segment produces something that yeah, basically turns this company from a $1.5 trillion market cap maybe to a $5 trillion market cap because the investments on the Reality Lab segment certainly aren't coming to fruition now. It's the hopes that down the line, it produces a product or a service that's just so extraordinary that yeah, it basically turns this business from just an advertising beast into something a lot more. So revenues of $40.5 billion is what we had. The cost and expenses is being relatively controlled over at Meta, certainly the marketing and sales, ticking down GNA, also ticking down on a year over year basis. So wherever Meta is able to control those expenses from an employee perspective, from a sales and GNA perspective, they certainly are. Well, their cost of revenues continue to move up from 6.2 up to 7.4, also spending more and more on R&D. Certainly some of that is being burned 
on that reality lab segment but again operating profits of 17 billion dollars up significantly from same time last year where you were closer to 13.7 we come down to the net income and yeah this company spitting out an additional four billion dollars of bottom line profitability that's off of basically six billion dollars added to your top line revenue so extremely extremely efficient at this point is this company you're also seeing the weighted shares outstanding begin to decline on a year-over-year -year basis when we come down to the cash flows you'll see this company aggressively buying back their common stock from a balance sheet perspective there's still a lot to like over here at meta as cash and cash equivalents coming up to 43.8 billion last year you were at 41.8 so adding on close to 2 billion on to that cash pile you also have this property and equipment line continuing to balloon up to 112 last year pardon me nine months ago you were at 96.5 billion so as this company continues to spend more and more on the capex side you'll see that line basically getting added onto the property and equipment on their asset side so certainly it's not money going down the drain money just being added on to that ai server and infrastructure being built out the important thing to note from a liabilities perspective is the fact that they added on close to 10 and a half billion dollars in long-term debt certainly some of that could be due to the fact that they're looking to maybe take out an acquisition sometime in 2025 some of that could again just be simply to continue building out the capex on the property and equipment side some of that certainly could be for a buyback or a dividend although that seems pretty unlikely as when we get down to the cash flows see this company printing out close to 24.7 billion dollars in operating cash flows that's over the last three months that's for a quarter and so yeah certainly for a dividend that they're paying out to the tune of 1.2 billion dollars for a buyback of nearly 8.8 .8 billion dollars yeah they don't need to take out nearly 10 billion dollars in debt to do that so certainly that 10 billion dollar take on of new debt is probably for an acquisition if i had to guess for the upcoming year or if not that at the very least at least to continue to build out that capex for the purchase of property plant and equipment so 8.2 billion dollars in a quarter again that capex continuing to accelerate from same time last year we also got the comments by the cfo that the capex will likely continue to accelerate into 2025 but all things considered from a cash flow perspective looking phenomenal as this company generates still still despite this heavy capex close to 16 billion in free cash flow and from that you get a buyback you also now get a dividend so this company very very flushed with cash and simply has a long runway ahead of itself to continue to do that buyback and subsequently pay out that dividend now from a technical perspective you're seeing the shares decline just a modest two and a half percent in the after hours if we pull this up to a closer timeline yeah you see shares are tracing back just to the bottom end of this range closer to 576 577 dollars a share so if you are a swing trader if you are just a trader in general and you want to maybe take a crack at shares of meta this is actually your level to probably step in and look to trade shares as you're near the bottom end of this uptrending channel of higher lows that have been also confirmed with higher highs and your upside is probably back up here somewhere close to all-time highs or pardon me past all-time highs close to the 600 30 dollars a share now from a buy and hold perspective certainly at these levels not overly excited or attractive to step in because you are still trading near your all-time highs and since you've run up close to 100 percent on the stock certainly needs a breather at one point or another so if you can get a pullback i'd say closer to this 530 540 dollar range that's a point when you become a bit more aggressive because you have some support at those levels certainly underneath 500 dollars is when you aggressively aggressively begin to pick up shares of meta if you find some support here you're probably seeing an upside back into new all-time highs closer to the 600s 610s in my opinion so from that perspective if you've held shares of meta probably not an exciting time to step in and be a buyer but certainly no reason to come in here and sell shares considering the fact that you're continuing to print boatloads of operating cash flows continuing to spit out just a lot of profitability and despite the fact that you're losing money on the reality lab segment this company's margins continue to rise and so from that perspective everything looks expected and healthy over at meta that was my take on shares of meta platform for the upcoming quarter you're anticipating that 46 billion dollar revenue figure if the shares can or pardon me if the company can come in closer to the high end of that range closer to 48 billion dollars that will be enough i think to push shares higher beyond these all-time highs let me know your thoughts on this one in the comment section below as always thanks so much for listening and i'll catch you guys in the next video